Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. Recently I've been looking at many Mars mission concepts, uh, including my shuttle Mars mission, shuttle constructed Mars mission, also BFS uh, from SpaceX, but uh, recently I was reminded of Lockheed Martin's Mars Ascent and Descent vehicle. They recently updated their plans to include a lunar lander. But uh, I, I liked the look of this Mars Ascent and Descent vehicle, which they presented to the IAC uh, last year. And this is the model from Lonesome Robots. So if you go on to the forums, you should be able to find Lonesome Robots Duna Ascent Descent vehicle. Uh, I have upscaled this by a factor of 1.33. Normally for Realism Overhaul, we upscale things by a factor of 1.6. But it seems like 1.33 is the correct upscaling for this model. And I base that on the fact that here we have an MADV decoupler. And it, I, I've changed names. It was originally DADV for Duna. Uh, but it says adapt, uh, it originally said adapter for the Ares 5 rocket. I've changed it to SLS just because um, this was proposed in 2017 and Ares 5 was not a thing in 2017. So anyway, uh, if we take a look, the scaling for at a 1.33 increase in scale, and I bring out an SLS block 1B, uh, get rid of the tiny adapter portion, hold on, get rid of that, and then attach this, uh, scooch it up a bit, you can see that it fits. Uh, not the whoa, not that tank. And not the most streamlined thing, I grant you. Oh, it's still trying to grab that tank. Stop it, stop it. Come on, come on, you can do it. There you go. So that's why I decided to go with this scaling, because it seemed to fit the 10 meter diameter at the base there. Uh, so let's talk about the vehicle itself before trying to launch it on SLS. This is the dry mass, 19 tons. Uh, which is heavy, but let's compare it to other pods. Uh, this is just an ascent and descent vehicle. It's just supposed to get them to the surface and uh, get them back up uh, again to a, a possible station, which means that we need a docking port. Now, I've configured this nose to be a NASA docking system, but I don't know if that will work or not. Um, not sure about that. But yeah, it's got this neat little uh, closable nose cone. I've put ample heat shielding all around. Technically, technically it's only supposed to be heat shield on the bottom, which is already pretty nifty. Um, let's take a look at how the sizing compares. BFS, <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, obviously this is only supposed to carry four people. BFS is supposed to carry quite a lot of people. Uh, Apollo command module, so that's a reasonable size actually. Uh, the crew portion is all of this, so that's quite a bit of room. So that's nice. Um, if we wanted a Dragon capsule for comparison, oh, uh, the shuttle, that's a good thing to look at. So it's smaller than the crew section of the shuttle, but the shuttle was supposed to carry more than four. And hopefully uh, the crew is not going to spend too much time in here. I mean, we assume that it's going to take some time to rendezvous with whatever they need to get to in orbit after they ascend. And so there has to be some provision for that. But also, let's have a Dragon Capsule. Uh, so yeah, it uh, compares favorably to these things uh, for a crew of four. So the scaling is not too bad. It has built-in RCS, but I have to test that. Now, uh, I've given it the uh, uh, Hydrogen-Oxygen RCS. And that's because it's a Hydrolox thing. And I don't think they want to pack different fuel. They'll probably just use the hydrogen and oxygen for the RCS. Probably gaseous instead of the liquid hydrogen and oxygen. So it won't get quite as much ISP. Right now the RCS is set to 400 ISP. Uh, it'll probably get, I mean, if it's they're using gaseous, it's probably 200, 280 or something like that um, at most. So yeah, we've got a little bit of a G thing there uh, because we're using liquid ones, though maybe they'll come up with a way of doing that. Um, food, water, and oxygen wise, for four crew it's two days. So that's all we've got in here. Uh, this section says, the way you build this by the way, it's, it comes in many pieces. There's the cockpit, and then there's this section. This is a uh, habitation module. Uh, I've made it so that if you type MADV you'll get all the parts. So 
Um, I'll include the realism of overhaul config that I have right now in the video description, but you'll of course have to download the Lonesome Robots mod. Um, Science Lab and Airlock. I don't guarantee that everything works right now. <laughs> we, we're going to see the extent to which it works once we launch it. Um, I've configured these to be service module. It doesn't matter for the dry mass. Uh, the dry mass is fixed. Um, you'll have to check to make sure. The RCS uses a slightly different fuel mixture than the actual engines. The engines are configured to be common extensible cryogenic engines, which are a variant of the RL-10. So, and there are six of them at the bottom of this. So we want that one. So the CCs. Uh, technically, uh, this big tank here is supposed to be the hydrogen tank, and this smaller tank up here is the oxidizer tank. But I'm just going to put uh, liquid hydrogen and oxygen in both. And these are our six RL10 engines. And right now, uh, 460 vacuum ISP. There is a 7% minimum throttle, 50 ignitions. So the CCs are quite nice. And uh, what that gives us is uh, 0.58 thrust to weight ratio on Earth. But if we change that to Mars, we can see 1.52, which is good. Now, we do need one other thing for Mars. Uh, when we're trying to land on Mars, it would be super helpful if we had parachutes. And so I'm going to... That, there are no parachutes built in here, nor do they come with the mod, as far as I know. So, unless I'm not searching for the right thing. Oh, well, I, I didn't find it in the folder either. Uh, so I'm going to pack uh, two sets here. And we're going to actually have to go by the wet mass. Now, there is a minor problem here. Uh, we've got all this hydrogen and oxygen. It's going to boil off. And you can see it's 70 tons as it is. Mm, so probably, obviously, the goal is to refuel this on Mars. I'm not too sure. It's got multiple RCS on each part. And that's a complicated thing. You can see that the first set is disabled and these are enabled and I don't know why. But um, uh, the, I'm, I'm going to have to check the RCS configuration when we launch. Uh, but yeah, the boil off issue, uh, we might, we've got service module tanks so that helps a bit. But I might have to build in radiators. Uh, there is a fuel cell in the cockpit. And that fuel cell runs on liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, for simplicity's sake. It could have been just gaseous hydrogen and oxygen, but I didn't want to complicate things. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we do have a fuel cell. That's how we generate power. But how long it can generate power is something I, would, I didn't actually calculate out. Uh, of course, it depends on how much fuel you want to consume because it's going to be using the fuel. Uh, it could last for a very long time if you use all the delta V to run the fuel cell. But I don't think you want to do that. Okay, so this is a drogue shoot first, let's say. And a drogue triple shoot, why not? And uh, wait, I, I wanted the Kevlar, yeah. Okay, and we are going to have drogue shoot. One target speed, let's say 120. Uh, altitude pre deployment, 8,000. Okay, pretty heavy part mass. Okay, so those are the drogue shoots, but at least they said they'd, they'd be able to do that. The main shoots, triple shoot, change material, Kevlar, and Mars. And so you're going to have to do this if you want to actually make it survive. Um, let's, say, let's say we want to try 20 and try that. No such luck. Um, okay, 40. Still no good. Um, use more than one shoot. Okay, then it's fine. So that's taking a bit of a bite into our Delta V, but not a huge amount. But we've got a staging issue here. All right. So that's pretty good. 5,000 is more than we need. Um, uh, I mean, 5,700 is more than we need. Lockheed's paper says they wanted 5,000 meters per second. So we would expect to see 5,000 meters per second here. And if we're going to use some for the fuel cell and for the RCS, maybe they would pack more than 5,000. So perhaps this amount is not unreasonable. Uh, let's uh, address the question of the mass of the vehicle and especially of the, the fuel tanks. I've been uh, uh, very strict about this. Let's say we've got a Pika-X fuel tank. It doesn't really matter. Um, 
and size it the same size. Let's have a small, smooth cone. And we can sort of see... I'm justifying my numbers, you see. So that you can feel comfortable that this is realism overhaul -y enough. So that's that uh, each of those is about the same size as that. We'll just have one. Okay. So we've got one of these. And you see the default tank would be dry 3.25 tons. Well, this bit here alone is 4.2 tons already. And this bit here is 7.4, but it's also got these wing pieces and probably other equipment, not the, including the engines itself. Um, incidentally, right now, I guess I'm landing on on the bottom, but I think there ought to be some sort of landing struts. But they didn't pop up when I say MADV or DADV. Uh, oh, wait, there is this landing gear. So I'll scale them up and make sure. I, I Unfortunately, they weren't in the same folder. I don't know why they didn't pop up. Anyway, so tank-wise, uh, these are actually pretty heavy. And if we switch to service module, this is six tons still only. And uh, these are combined mm, 11.7, no, 11.6 tons. So yeah, they're pretty heavy. Um, they could be lighter. But, uh, and at the same time, this has a capacity of 175 kiloliters. Uh, 175,000 liters combined. Uh, this top one has 64,000. This one has 80,000. So they have combined 144. So they have less volume than this tank right now. So overall, I think it's very reasonable. In fact, uh, shading on being too conservative here. So yeah, uh, we've got this. I, I should uh, fix up the landing struts before we launch this. So let me do that first, try and hunt for that part. But uh, we can save this so that I don't have to do too many things when we get back in. Okay, so here we are. I will fly this manually. It's worth noting that the Lonesome Robots model of this does have a cockpit. Uh, so that is a thing. Well, I should dump my HUD and of course raster prop monitor. It still calls itself DADV in the cockpit though, but that'll be fine. And the uh, eye point is a little bit low, but uh, there are actually Kerbals underneath us, so, and fans, interesting. Okay, anyway, so that is a feature. Uh, but yeah, the rocket was swinging on the launch pad initially. We'll see how this works. The aerodynamics is going to be interesting. And I'll fly it manually. Well, I'll fly it with the assistance of Smart ASS, let's put it that way. So, uh, without further ado, throttle up, ignition, and launch. So there's an SLS a Block 1B, so its capacity to lower Earth orbit is 105 tons, uh, given that the payload fully fueled is 73 tons, it shouldn't have any problem. It cannot transfer this to Mars, um, but we'll see what we can do once we get to orbit. Yeah, I already feel like this is going to be aerodynamically fun. I mean, not so much because of the shape of the MADV, but you know, this open area instead of a fairing produces a lot of drag, in theory. Now, in the Lockheed Martin, more recent Lockheed Martin paper from the IAC from 2018, uh, uh oh, we've got some. Uh, no, 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 pitch down, pitch down, pitch down, pitch down. Please. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. This is a bad thing. Well, I was about to say uh, in the recent paper they showed this landing on the moon, so I was going to try that. Um, I guess this is a good opportunity to find out whether uh, whether the cockpit is recoverable. 
Uh, there was a piece that had a decoupler, I thought. So maybe it's actually able to separate out line. It'd be nice to have a little decoupler portion, but just for... I mean, but you never got a launch crew in this from Earth like the way we are right now. And uh, the RO configurations that I'm going to include... I don't know why I have all these stages. Yeah, the RO configuration that I'm going to include in the video description uh, will allow this to be controllable without crew. I feel that that's important. Oh, fine. Let's just arm parachute. Arm. Now these are configured for Mars, so we don't know what they're going to do here. But presumably they'll be even better. Okay, and full parachute deployment brings us to 4.6 meters per second. So I'll consider them safe and let's go ahead and try again with KOS. But if it flips again, we've got a sort of bigger problem. Okay, let's try this again, this time with KOS, so here we go, mm, edit SLS-1B, and plop that in, and hopefully that'll be good enough, we'll see. Uh, the KOS script is told to hold the prograde vector when there's high dynamic pressure, so hopefully it can deal with this, but I'm not 100% certain of that. Also, it turned out that I was using base RS-25s instead of RS-25Ds initially, so I've upgraded the engines. Alright. I've got to get these plumes on the shuttle. Uh, well, okay, they don't look quite as good anymore, but... Uh, yeah, the shuttle plumes on the SRBs don't look quite right. This will be better. Well, it's mainly while we're going through the speed of the sound that we're going to have problems. Last time at this part we were fine too. The MADV doesn't really have aerodynamic control surfaces. It's not one of its features. Of course, we have a limited amount of information. Lockheed hasn't provided all the details. We do know the shape, and we do know the fuel it's using, and that, you know, entails certain requirements at that point, and of course, the fact that it's carrying four people. Now, we don't have any way of getting them down to the surface safely. On their lunar lander, they have a little elevator, and I don't know whether they're going to use an elevator on this too. Maybe. It's possible. There's sort of a railing out of the airlock that uh, sort of looks like the rails of a lift. So, it's possible. Oh, this is looking much better. Well, this is why I use KOS. It's uh, better at uh, fine control than I am. So, even when I'm using Smart ASS. And it knows when the dynamic pressure is uh, in a bad situation. I don't know where, where's the mod, oh, that's on the SLS portion. I'm going like, I'm pretty sure I removed all the mod propellant from the MADV. I'll have to look at the SLS configuration to see where that mod propellant is hiding and get rid of it. I, oh, so the MADV does not currently have any reaction wheels. I might consider adding those in, but priority is to figuring out the boil-off situation, so maybe building in some radiators, uh, and then also maybe we should have some way of like, uh, just build in the ISRU unit. Not the drills, but just the thing that converts water to liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. I'm pretty sure it'll be easy enough to find the information of how much that would weigh. And then we could just build that converter into the bottom fuel tank, maybe. And so then you'll have the ability to convert the water that we could drill on Mars into hydrogen and oxygen to refuel itself. That is not a feature of the Realism Overhaul configuration right now, but I'll think about it. 
we already have the fuel cell. The fuel cell takes the hydrogen and oxygen and produces power from it. And we've got power electric charge drain, so let's see if we can activate the fuel cell and verify that it works. So start fuel cell. Yes, we have uh, it is producing electric charge. Good. And now it's topped off. We can stop the fuel cell for now. We don't really have enough food, water, and oxygen here to manage a lunar transfer. We, there is some spare room in the upper modules, the cockpit, the habitation module, and the science lab. So there is space to add more food, water, and oxygen as necessary. We're just not carrying it right now. Uh, oh, we've got some oscillation problems right now, just as this stage is ending. I don't know what to think about this. Uh, well, we've got stage separation, and it's all over the place. And what's going to happen when it ignites? Okay, well, that's not quite the right direction. Hmm. Curious. Uh, let me extend the nozzles. I can't do that on its own. It's very slowly turning around. Fortunately, we have plenty of time to apoapsis this thanks to the previous stage. Maybe I'll just get a different uh, RS-25 model. I think these, those might have been a little bit too wiggly. I don't know. Anyway, it seems to be recovering. Okay, we're coming to the end of the very long RL-10 burn with the RL-10B2s. Uh, I'm doing physical time warp here to save myself. Looks like we'll end up with about 2,000 meters per second here. And that's not including the 5,400 we have in the MADV itself. Okay. It's shut down. Yep, 2,000 pretty much on the dot. Okay, well, uh, well, we might as well keep going as far as we can. We do have the food, water, and oxygen problem, so we got to keep that in mind. But let's tar target the moon. I think that's the most reasonable thing. Um, unfortunately, we're not at the best inclination for that. I didn't actually line up with the moon ahead of time. So, yeah, uh, the problem is we could do an off-plane transfer, but the off-plane transfer takes a long time. Well, anyway, let's uh, get out there as much as we can and see how much fuel we have left and what we could do once we reach the moon if we wanted to, if we could, if we had the food, water, and oxygen for it. Beyond that, maybe we'll just uh, see how it handles in the atmosphere coming back in. Not that it's supposed to do that. It's a Mars Ascent and Descent vehicle. It's not an Earth return vehicle. But uh, I've put formidable heat shielding upon it uh, because I don't know how much we need at the Mars end. Basically, I've given it space plane heat shielding, uh, shuttle heat shielding. Um, it does look like it has tiles on the bottom, so not totally unreasonable. Okay, so that's crashing into the moon. That's probably close enough. I'm not going to fiddle around with it. So uh, let's uh, handle this transfer, see how much fuel we have left, and the question I want to ask is, uh, will we have enough to uh, make orbit around the moon, land on the moon, and then we would be able to refuel on the moon, provided that we land in a place with water, right? Then it could drill for water. We don't have the drills on here, that's an additional mass that we haven't ca uh, counted in yet. But, okay. Now as far as other things that I've posted videos on that you might want configurations for, Probably the next video I have for the shuttle, I'll post the RO configuration I have for it, and that's the DEC-Q shuttle, and the configuration is for KSP 1.3.1. As far as uh, BFR, BFS, that's more complicated because uh, it's, it's a bunch of procedural parts except for the front end. I can give you the front end, I really need to fix the texture on it, but we need to figure out the balance on it, the aerodynamics. So the next video on that is probably aerodynamic testing, which might be suborbital flights. So we'll, we'll try that out on suborbital flights and check out its aerodynamics and see how we can tweak that. But 
I, I don't know. I mean, it's a complicated one, the BFS. I mean, the nice thing about the MADV is, first of all, the center mass and center lift seem to be in the right place just by default. In other words, just putting the fuels in the tank, it seems to be all right. If I put just oxygen up here and hydrogen down here, it'd be even better. So it, it wouldn't be any problem at all. The problem with the BFS is that it seems to be front heavy. And that's partly because of, you know, we have to be able to carry cargo in front. Okay, separation. Hmm, that didn't happen quite the way I wanted. Uh, you, go away. I should have just uh, decoupled this one instead of the decoupler on top of SLS. Okay, RCS. Well, let's uh, throttle down and then activate everything. Okay, now, could you point at the node, please? Let's see how the RCS works. Looks good. Looks good. Again, no reaction wheel, so we're gonna have to rely on this RCS. And it orients fine. Good. This has six RL10s compared to the upper stage of SLS, which has four. But these RL10s are less powerful. They only provide 67 kilonewtons. You can tell they're smaller, too. Um, so, yeah. They don't have the extended cone. Because that's inconvenient for landings. They probably should only have like 500 and, uh, 454 seconds of ISP rather than 460. But the um, common extensible cryogenic engine configuration in realism overhaul has 460, so that's why I got, went with. Let's double check the landing gear. I did not change the the mass of the landing gear. They're like 0.5 a piece, which is heavy. So this is. How heavy is this dry? 22 tons, so we've, uh, we've sort of grown since the very first iteration. 22 tons dry here. And that uh, actually matches um, what Lockheed was aiming for with the lunar lander, so... And they were aiming for 5 uh, kilometers per second there too. Basically they want to have the same system work on the moon and Mars. And that requires 5 kilometers per second, enough thrust to weight ratio for Mars and uh, they want to use hydrogen and oxygen, which means that they need to have zero boil off. So if this has zero boil off, and uh, that's certainly something we need to build in here, uh, it could have transferred to Mars, I mean, it shouldn't have crew because it doesn't have enough supplies for crew all the way to Mars, but on its own, it could be transferred to Mars, and uh, Maybe we'll be doing re-entry testing soon and see if we can capture around Mars aer using aerobreak. And then land on Mars and then if it's in a location with water, refuel on Mars. Um, if it has, it doesn't even need zero boil off because it's got 5,000 meters per second to transfer to Mars and do relevant maneuvers. So that's a lot. And of course the final landing burn. Actually the only fuel it needs to have when it reaches Mars is enough fuel for the final landing burn after the parachutes are up. Um, I think maybe they didn't even expect, uh, Lockheed I mean, didn't expect me to use the parachutes. It might have been aiming for a propulsive landing. Uh, 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 you know, instead of, after the aero break, not use parachutes, just use engines all the way. I'm not sure. Probably. Because that's optimal for reusability. The parachutes are not the most reusable thing ever. Okay, uh, how are we doing? Well, I'm not gonna belabor the point. Uh, we can get a moon encounter. And 4,000 meters per second is more than enough to capture around the moon and land. Not to take off again. It'd have to refuel on the surface to take off again. But rather than going through all that, let's plot a maneuver to bring it down so that we can try and bring them through the atmosphere uh, before their life support is up. Seems pretty agile, and let's just absolutely verify that reaction wheels are not a problem, and nothing is running off of mod propellant, <laughs> thankfully, uh, or any other fuel except for liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Very important for us. Yep. Okay. The engines have 50 ignitions. 
liquid hydrogen is boiling off, you can see now we have an imbalance between hydrogen and oxygen. And have we been running the fuel cell? I thought I turned it off. When I turned it off, it doesn't seem to have been consuming electric charge much. I'll have to work on that. Anyway, just on principle, I'll start the fuel cell. We're going to want some delta V, but not a whole lot. Let's say we reserve 500. That's plenty. That, that'd be enough for a landing on Mars. Or even a soft landing on Earth, potentially, if I have some practice. But it doesn't have aerodynamic surfaces, so it wouldn't be good for that. There's a point where the RCS is pretty much completely useless in the atmosphere. We probably... I don't know if we're gonna hit land or not. We're going pretty fast. Uh, it doesn't look like it, does it? <laughs> we're, we're, we're over the Pacific and we're gonna be over the Pacific for an extended period of time, so... The possibility that I'm gonna land this somewhere is... unlikely. There's like Tahiti somewhere down there. Oh, it's getting red. Oh, it's losing control. Seems like it's front heavy, actually. Um, okay. Ooh. Now it's getting back. Yeah, I guess. Oh, no, it's going all over the place. Oh, uh, this is not good. No, it's going. Oh, it's all gone. Okay. So, yeah, it's not an Earth return vehicle. So, don't use it for that. Probably not a good idea. We'll work on the balance a little bit more. It's probably not properly balanced for Mars entry either, if it's gonna have trouble that soon. But yeah, yeah. Interesting though, interesting. Uh, nice vehicle design, and I'll give you guys the RO configurations I have for them, for it, and uh, hopefully you can have some fun with it. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.